I'm Mike Pabantonio, and this is Ring of Fire. Wall Street bankers and hedge fund managers make millions and even billions of dollars every year for producing nothing of value at all for this economy. All this happens while American workers watch their paychecks decline as their productivity actually increases. We'll take a look at that disparity with author Les Leopold. Faulty medical devices, well, they've been flooding the American market for years with little to no federal oversight. We'll be taking a look at the failures of both the industry and the regulatory agencies that allow products on the market that are killing and crippling American citizens. And defense contractors have stolen billions of dollars from the federal government in recent years, but our leaders in Washington continue to award those people millions of dollars in federal contracts every year. We'll be taking a look at the criminal history of some of the largest U.S. defense firms in just a minute. Right now, you've just entered the ring of fire. You can't change Washington from the inside. You can only change it from the outside. Grand jury secrecy rules. For political gain. The press can find out. That has nothing to do with politics, but go ahead. It wouldn't bother me. Oops. <laughs> if there's one group of people less trustworthy than the host of Fox News, it's got to be the U.S. defense contractors. In just the last few years, we've seen them steal billions of dollars from our federal government through fraud, lies, and sometimes outright theft. So why does the federal government keep awarding multi-billion dollar contracts to these criminals? Let's see if we can find an answer to that question with two of the best attorneys in America, Howard Nations and Michael Berg. So right now, guys, what we have is we have the federal government almost enabling defense contractors at this point by pay, continuing to pay them money after, we have, uh, after, we, after they've had to find Lockheed and Northrop and Raytheon and everybody the government is giving money to. These are companies that have always already paid huge civil fines and huge criminal fines for defrauding the American public. And, and, but nevertheless, day one, we take their money for being criminals, and day two, we give them a government contract. Isn't, isn't that about how you see it, Howard? Well, it is, Mike, and the problem here is that this is so endemic in the system. It goes all the way back. If you take KBR, for example, who's one of the most egregious offenders, uh, the B in KBR is for Brown. It was Brown and Root Construction Company, uh, which merged with Kellogg. Brown was the man who, in the 30s and 40s, had all the political connections with Washington. He's the guy that a young fellow by the name of Lyndon Johnson came to when he wanted to run for the United States Senate. And he got George R. Brown's backing. And then when Johnson became Senate Majority Leader, Vice President and President, George R. Brown and this entire crew, Kellogg and Brown and Root Construction Company and later Halliburton, just got a locked in position with the Defense Department and the federal government, and it's never changed since. And well, Howard, let me, ask, let me ask you something. This is the same company, if you recall, where you had, uh, they actually, uh, you, you might remember the Jamie Lee Jones story, where they had this young employee working for KBR that was gang raped. That's and true. after she was gang raped by employees of KBR, not just employees, but actually management employees for KBR, she was then, she was then uh, secreted away into a, a, a storage container. She was unconscious, actually almost in a coma, had, was bleeding profusely, had been raped uh, by, by several different uh, KBR employees, and they intended to get rid of her body. Now, we know that happened. And we know the story was the story unfolded right before the American public's eyes, right before our, our senators and congressmen's eyes. But then our government then turns around and gives KBR another contract. Rather than punishing for this event, they give them another contract. Why is it that KBR has this special, this special route to our taxpayer money? Well, because they're completely locked into the politicians and the military uh, personnel who control the contracts and they have been locked in for decades and they're not going to lose that kind of power over such things as uh, lawsuits that they have to defend and regardless of how egregious their conduct is they will have a major egregious act 
Uh, and then within months or within a year, they'll get major, major billion dollar contracts. And that's a cycle and it's not going to stop. There's absolutely nothing on the horizon that would cause this to come to an end. Michael Berg, uh, at this point, we know this. We know that hundreds of defense contractors uh, have been, uh, we, we've, they, they, we've proven that they've defrauded the government to the tune of $1.1 trillion just in the last decade, past decade. But nevertheless, the Pentagon continues to do business with the people who have stolen this, these trillions of dollars. And it's, it's just business as usual. There is, seems to be nothing in the way of allowing a, a defense contractor to steal as much as they want and then go to work for the government on some special kind of contract. Uh, you've watched this develop. What's your take on it? Well, what's, what's really crazy here is that, you know, the American public doesn't realize that these companies who are being fined, in many cases, you know, millions and millions of dollars for their conduct, that they get rewarded and they continue to be on the list to get these contracts and are being rewarded of, with billions of dollars. Right here in Colorado, Lockheed Martin, for example, was fined over $11 million in the following year. They were awarded $30 billion worth of contracts. It's just outrageous. And, and, and I think Howard hit it on the, you know, hit the nail on the head when he said they are so locked into the politicians in the Department of Defense. That, that, that the American people have to say something and really stand up and stop this because it's the taxpayers who end up paying for this kind of fraud. Michael, Raytheon is a story that we're seeing in the press right now where we understand now that Raytheon uh, has its own sordid history of paying uh, almost, uh, you know, paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines for things like fraud, concealment, uh, actually just flat out lying to the government about doing work that they never did, just on and on with this history of Raytheon that if you take a look, anybody watching this program could in, in 15 minutes figure out just how sorted that history is. But right now we have Raytheon working on a special project, again, that pr as a defense contractor, government's probably going to end up paying for it. Tell us about that, that project. Well, now, Raytheon's a unique situation, and I think, Mike, one of the things we have to really recognize is they've already been found guilty of illegally acquiring uh, confidential and secret Air Force and Pentagon, do Pentagon documents which is unbelievable. They are working on a project now called, they call it Riot, and be honestly, maybe the American people ought to riot over this project because what they're doing is they've got a secret spyware which they link into your face, Facebook account, your iPad, your iPhone, your computer, and they gather data about American citizens and they're spying on American citizens, and, and they own this privately, and they're doing it under a defense contract with the DOD, Department of Defense. But the scary part of this whole thing is, is what are they gonna do with this information? Number one, should they be allowed to collect the information? They, they were bragging about the part that they could tell where people are going, where they've been, where they expect them to be. If you go work out in the morning at six o'clock, they can find you, and it, it, it opens up the potential, and this is 1984, Orwell on steroids. Okay, Spine. well, is, isn't the, Howard, isn't the problem here with a, with, a setting, with a setting like that is, we know that government obviously is not willing to do anything about defense contractors stealing trillions of dollars. I mean, that's, that's the number, that's not our number, that's the Department of Justice saying this is how much money has been stolen by way of fraud, by way of completely, just, just outright theft. This is the number. So we know the number and government obviously has nothing in place to stop it. What, how, how, does, how does the private individual do anything about it? Well, the private individual cannot do very much about it because it is so totally endemic within the process. Uh, for example, if you look back at the situation with Halliburton, uh, Halliburton, uh, when, when the, um, Cheney became Secretary of Defense, uh, Halliburton got just the inside track on absolutely everything to the extent that they didn't have it. I un understand KBR and Halliburton were all in bed together on this thing at the time. And when the neocons took over, and they had the You're opportunity talking about Iraq, to when, 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 they, when they took over. Send out when they all took the contracts over. they want, they immediately started when uh, with Cheney, they got no bid, no competition, 
contracts. And they managed to get incredible contracts that were so far beyond the pale. And you're talking about the trillion, $1.1 trillion that's been uh, basically stolen through fraud and so forth. A major portion of the uh, losses in Iraq were to Halliburton. And it was, it, the reason nobody can do anything about it is because of the connections. The president of Halliburton was Dick Cheney. When Dick Cheney got the nomination for vice president, Halliburton gave him a $38 million bonus before he took office as vice president. He in turn gave them no competition contracts. This is a company, Halliburton, who actually sold pulse neuron generators to detonate uh, nuclear weapons to Libya. Yeah, in other Does words, they- Does happen from that? that? No, no consequences. Howard, Howard, Howard let, me be clear, let me be clear about that story. First of all, the, they, the government said, A, we're not doing business with Libya, and B, you certainly don't want to be selling them weapons, but, but this is a company that decided to sell them weapons that could detonate nuclear bombs. And, and then even after that, we find out that we're still doing business with Halliburton's. We're still doing business with the KBRs. Michael, let me flip over to you on this. KBR, uh, I don't know if you saw the story where you had, they, they were found guilty of negligence for basically poisoning, uh, poisoning soldiers in the field with sodium dichromate. Did you follow that story and what's your reaction to it? We, we did follow it completely. And, and Mike, let me just tell you, first of all, it's unbelievable that they, first of all, lied to the troops over there and told them this was just orange sand. It would just be an irritant. But the worst part about it is after there was a lawsuit filed in Oregon and they were held liable for $96 million plus fees and costs. For, that, brought, for that event. Exactly. And uh -huh. they, what they did was they then brought out a secret agreement they had with the Department of Defense in which they were immune and indemnified and now are looking to get the taxpayers to pay that judgment and their attorney's fees, which will be well over $100 million. Mike, let me put this in perspective. This was a case where you had KBR that was contracted to, to do a water treatment facility over in Iraq. And they told the soldiers that, listen, if you use this, if you work around this facility, everything's going to be okay. It's, it's, it, it, the chemicals that you're using might be a mil, uh, just a mild irritant, but in fact, they were carcinogens and you've already had soldiers dying because of it. But now KBR wants taxpayers to pay for that. We're going to take a break. Uh, we'll pick up with the criminal nature of defense contractors and what individuals can do about it. I'm Mike Papantonio. And we're talking with Howard Nations and Michael Berg. This is Ring of Fire. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Ring of Fire. I'm Mike Papantonio. We've been talking today about the crimes being committed by the defense contractors working for the federal government. And we've been trying to figure out why our government continues to hire these corrupt criminal corporations, giving millions and millions of dollars in federal contracts every year. I'm back with Howard Nations and Michael Berg. Howard, let me ask you, uh, you were talking before the break about the idea of uh, how a whistleblower avenue in America may be the only way to solve the corruption problem. Tell us about it. Well, Mike, this is not a new problem. The original uh, False Claims Act was uh, promulgated by Abraham Lincoln in 1863 and passed by the Congress because contractors in the Civil War were defrauding and overcharging the uh, Union government for the uh, services that they were rendering. They were even doing such things as mixing sawdust into gunpowder. So uh, Lincoln was incensed by this, came up with the False Claims Act. The problem with that one was there were too many hurdles for the whistleblower to jump over in order to prosecute successfully, and there were not enough incentives for the whistleblower. So not much really happened uh, on, wh on False Claims Act until 1986 when it was amended. At that time, they made it much more lucrative for the whistleblowers to come forth. They were much more motivated to do so because they were also protected under the act. So since that time, whistleblowers have done more good 
in prosecuting these contractors and bringing these contractors to account than any other single aspect of the government. If they robbed a bank, they'd go to jail. Uh, if they committed any other kind of crime, they would go to jail. But here we have corporations. We can figure out who made the decisions, can't we? We can just trace the money and understand who made these decisions to steal from the federal government. But we have a U.S. Justice Department that's been very slow to put people in jail for this type of crime, haven't they? Yes, and nobody is prosecuting these folks criminally. When they do get prosecuted criminally, it's done with a criminal fine. And those criminal fines are really totally a slap on the wrist for these multi-billion dollar corporations with their multi-billion dollar contracts. Not only that, even when they do get hit, this, this, is, this is infuriating. But to follow up on what Mike Berg was saying uh, about the situation with, the, with KBR, they got hit for $100 million by an Oregon jury, $85 million verdict, $15 million in attorney's fees and legal expenses. They're for killing soldiers, eight soldiers died uh, and were poisoned and are slowly dying now from cancer. And even with a jury verdict, with them finding that they poisoned our soldiers, they still won't, they don't want to pay it. They are coming back against the taxpayers to get that hundred million back under these indemnification agreements that are so secret. I've never heard of this before. Yeah. Indemnification it, agreements so secret that even the attorneys and the Department of Justice could not see them. Yeah. That kind of links How, that are incredible. Howard, the truth is Mike did get it right when he said, Mike Berg, let me ask you this. Uh, you, you were talking about the idea that we have now a situation where a corporation can kill American soldiers and still, you know, pay, pay no money. Uh, Howard just described a situation where a jury came back, they came up with a verdict, and now the, K, now the KBR is saying taxpayers must pay that. Nobody with KBR goes to jail. There's no criminal. Uh, there's no criminal case here. There's plenty. There's plenty for a criminal case, but nobody's prosecuted. And Michael Berg, let me ask you this: If you were to go back and just give us a quick summary of the type of fraud, just in a thumbnail sketch of how bad the fraud is and how much we're losing as taxpayers, give us a quick rundown. Well, you know, if you look at the statistics. Um, they, they're, over the last 10 years, for those companies, over 100 companies that have had civil penalties against them that have been anywhere from millions to, you know, tens of millions of dollars, what they, what's happened is over a half a trillion dollars has been awarded to those contractors after they have pled to these civil penalties. With regard to criminal penalties, which as Howard mentioned are very, very slap on the wrist, there's been almost $400 billion awarded to these companies. Uh, that's outrageous. They should be taken off the list. They should not be allowed to bid any more on these contracts. And, and we're talking about some of the most lucrative. For example, like I said earlier, you know, you've got uh, Martin, uh, uh, Lockheed Martin here in Colorado. They were hit with almost $11 million fine. The next year, they were awarded a $30 billion contract with the Department of Defense. They should have been off the list. Uh, Grumman. Grumman had a $19 million fine. They got over $25 billion. Uh, Michael, this has to stop. This country, as we know, a lot of rhetoric coming out about the debt that we have, and here we are allowing these criminal companies who have pled guilty to both civil and criminal uh, violations are, are, are going forward and ripping off false claims, false documentation, and, and are now getting rewarded with billions and billions of dollars worth of contracts. It's Howard, outrageous. Howard, the quick list uh, that, that, that strikes me is you had the Pentagon paid uh, almost uh, $600 billion in the past 10 years to more than 300, now again, $600 billion paid in the past 10 years to 300 co contractors, defense contractors, that were involved in civil fraud. They had already pled right. and said, we committed civil fraud. Then you had another 250 million went to, uh, to 54 contractors, and this is unbelievable to me. But 250 million went to, to contractors, 54 contractors, who said, not only did we steal from you, we engaged in hardcore criminal fraud. Right. And the government still said, you know what? 
that's okay. For example, Lockheed Martin 2008, as Mike pointed out, $11 million in the government the next, uh, next uh, year comes back and says, you know what, we're going to give you a $30 billion contract. How, how does it ever end if you have a Justice Department that doesn't recognize what crime is? Isn't that part of the problem here? Well, there's one bright light on the horizon in that Senator Wyden has proposed that the indemnity agreements that we were talking about be made public and, and that they uh, be required to be justified by agreement with Congress. So right now the, uh, the military does these totally uh, secret, I mean totally secret, indemnification agreements. Those have got to stop. Senator widens on that requiring full disclosure and justification agreement with Congress before that can be done. And then the other thing that's happening is uh, Senator Sanders, Bernie Sanders, is all over this uh, report that came out that was the source of, all of this information. But at the bottom line, where it stops is when the people who have the information within these corporations, the people who have inside information, when they come forward and become a whistleblower, when they come forward, step up and say, enough, this is way past enough, and they become the they become the spokesperson for the American taxpayer who's picking up the bill for all this. Michael Berg, let me ask you, uh, Howard just to talk, Howard just discussed the idea of the indemnity agreement. Now, what what this actually means is that when a, when a contractor, a defense contractor working for the Pentagon commits a crime. Now, let me just tell you how extreme this can be. The crime can be murder. Mm -hmm. The crime can be an intentional act that arises to the conduct of murder. And they're still given an indemnity protection. You remember when Blackwater got into the problems, they actually murdered people. And they were saying, well, gee, we can murder people because we have an indemnity contract. Right. Uh, is, there, is there any area of the law or any area of culture or otherwise that we say, yeah, you can murder somebody, and if you do, the government is going to step in and protect you, and the government is going to, uh, the government's even going to pay your legal fees, and they're going to pay any kind of civil fees that you may have? Can you think of any setting where that's ever happened? You know what, what? What has to happen here is that the Justice Department has to prosecute to the full extent of the law. We have to have the president, and we cannot let them get away with this. There is no basis to allow this, um, and and the American people have to go to their senators. This is very important. We can't let these corporations run wild with these crazy secret indemnity agreements and be allowed to murder people, to lie to them, to, to kill our troops, which had with the KBR incident. And we need to have a Justice Department that is active and, and going after these people and, and putting them in jail. And once we do that, then we can stop it. Without that, I, I think that this is going to continue on and on and on, as you and Howard have talked about. Guys, isn't that the only way to change the culture of crime? You don't do that by slapping them on the wrist. You don't do that by making them pay money. They, they're used to paying big money. It isn't isn't the, the, what you do here is you do it by throwing people in jail. Uh, the, the truth is, I remember when, uh, when uh, even Ronald Reagan was confronted with the SNL scandal out of Texas, that 600 bankers went to jail. Nevertheless, on Wall Street, this is a very close parallel to what we've been talking about here, where you have a Department of Justice that seems completely unwilling to throw a guy in a three-piece suit with a Rolex watch and an Armani suit in prison, but we can throw everybody else in prison. So that's kind of what we have to overcome if we're ever gonna change the culture of crime on Wall Street or if we're going to change the culture of crime uh, it, with the defense contractors that, that are stealing us blind with, with absolutely no downside. Mike Berg and Howard Nations are both past presidents of the National Trial Lawyers Association. We'll be talking about topics like this every week. We want you to tune in. Thank you, Mike. Thank, Thank you, you, Howard. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Coming up, author Les Leopold is going to join us for a discussion about the gross compensation being awarded to Wall Street bankers who produce absolutely nothing of value for our economy. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back.